Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of how to take and edit a time lapse. Um, on today's episode, we are, I'm going to show you how to edit a time lapse using a lot of time lapse and Lightroom. Just to start off, I'm excited to try out this microphone. Um, it's a newer mic. Um, I got it a couple of months ago and haven't used it yet and I really wanted to test it so I thought today was a perfect opportunity to see how this bike does while showing you how to edit a time lapse. So we're gonna go straight into a lot of time lapse. If you've not heard of a lot of time lapse before, it's basically an editing software um, specifically for time, editing time lapses that is synced to Lightroom um, and it's honestly the best software that you can get to edit your time lapse. Uh, there is a free version that you can test out before purchasing the, pro the program. I absolutely love this program so we're going to jump straight into it. Once you've opened a lot of time lapse you'll get this interface from here you're going to go to the folder where you save all of your images this is very important make sure you save your raw files in a folder that's easily accessible whether it's on your hard drive desktop whatever it is um, as you can see i've put it under camel's back awesome colors part one because i did take two time lapses of this um, you'll get a preview screen of the time lapse and there's a blue line which is basically just like a buffering of what your time lapse is going to look like so you can play it back um, as you can see nothing exciting in this time lapse because the clouds had all disappeared but for the purpose of this um, tutorial I'm just going to show you how to edit it so you're going to look at the visual workflow if you do not have raw files it's going to automatically jump to the basic jpeg folder you don't really want that you're gonna see it's gonna take you down the workflow basically so starting with the keyframes we're going to set a keyframe a keyframe is basically going to tell Lightroom which images you want to edit and then it'll automatically blend all of the edited photos seamlessly together in LR time lapse. So I'm just going to set two keyframes, one in the front and one in the end. Of course you can go as many as you want. Uh, you can also customize it. Let's say there was a jump over here. You can click and create a keyframe over there going to save it so this is going to save the metadata um, onto each image or keyframe so when you put it into Lightroom it knows what images you want to edit make sure you've got Lightroom open and it's in library mode um, we're going to drag hold this and drag the box into Lightroom and drop it it will automatically open up uh, the input option on Lightroom and I like to select the add button and if you wanted to create a collection of this in Lightroom you can just add the collection over here I'm not going to do that I'm just going to click import and import all of the images so it will process all of it over here you can see there's four stars on the first image which is basically the keyframe um, so the filter we're going to change at the top here, filter to LR keyframes. And that's just going to show us the two keyframes that we want to edit. It's just easier to find it that way. I'm going to up my exposure by 0.75, bring up the shadows. Bring the whites up a little bit, drop the blacks, boost the saturation and vibrance. You can work with this as well. It does give it an extra little bit of punch. You don't have to use this, but however you want to edit it is 
up to you, use your discretion. I like to denoise and de uh, denoise the image for all of my time lapses and then enable the um, lens correction. I'm also going to crop this. Uh, and there you have it. We've got the before and after of this image. You can see it's significantly better. And also you can just see how much more you can manipulate the image when you're using a raw file. So the next thing you want to do is just select the edited image that you just edited and then press control to select the sim second image. If you're on a Mac, it's obviously something else. Um, and then you're going to come up to scripts and you're going to say a lot of time lapse sync keyframes and this will automatically sync all your settings onto the second image. So from there we're going to go back into library. This is where you're going to save the metadata and it will automatically um, copy those settings into a lot of time lapse. But you have to be in library mode. You cannot be in develop mode when you're doing this. You're going to highlight or select both uh, images and then right click, go down to metadata and save metadata to files. You'll see it's saving. And when you go into LR time lapse, a pink line will appear, which is the visual previews. You're going to click auto transition and this will basically copy all of those settings that you've just edited from Lightroom into a lot of time lapse which is great once you have the visual preview button clicked on you'll be able to see the physical preview it'll basically render the whole thing so you can watch and play it back um, before you export you don't have to do these this setting you can just basically go ahead and save it at this point but I always like to do the visual preview, make sure everything looks good. And then we're going to move on to the visual, the flicker before we continue exporting. The next step would be to do a visual D flicker. So you're going to click on visual D flicker and you'll adjust this the way you want it to, depending on how bad of um, the flicker you have. I like to keep it on the melted pass deflicker and have two passes so it will do two rounds of deflickering to try and get the best results uh, for your time lapse. From here you have two options. One, you can either export it directly from a lot time lapse that or you can basically read all of the metadata that you have pulled from LR time lapse back into Lightroom and save it through Lightroom. But I'm going to show you both options and you can choose how you want to do it. So you can click export and render, create a folder and I'm going to call it edited uh, and then part one. And then you'll get a bunch of these settings. So the codec, which is going to be H.264 for the most part. Um, what uh, file size you want to do it. So I'm going to select 4K. I want all my time lapses to be 4K. If you're not shooting it to be 4K, then what's the point? Unless you are recording a 1080p YouTube video, that's fine too. But I always stick with 4K. I make sure that my quality is on ultra high and then the frame rate I'm going to change it to 24 frames just because this tutorial is going to be in 24 frames but you choose whichever frame rate you want color sampling I'm just going to keep it on 420 everything else looks good yep then you're just basically going to click export and render and it will export this file in a video format for you, ready to go, ready to upload. I like to save the metadata and go back into um, Lightroom. You're going to go back to the top here and turn off the filter so you can see all of the images again. And then I'm going to say control A because I'm selecting all of them, right click 
and read metadata data from files. So this will basically pull all the information that you've edited in LR time lapse back into Lightroom. Okay, we're gonna go up to file and export. Um, this is where you're gonna choose your folder. Uh, I have the folder here, edited part one, select folder. Uh, I'm not going to rename it. If you want to rename it, you can, because it's already in a number sequence, you don't really want to be changing the name of it. Um, I use JPEG, 100% quality, and then the color space is Rec 709. Just make sure that I don't have any watermark selected. Um, and then I'm going to export it. I am going to be using DaVinci Resolve. I think it's the best editing software that you'll find out there that is not a subscription. It's a one-time purchase. I'm just going to pull open my stock footage uh, project and pull in the time lapse that we just edited in there. You'll see it'll automatically have it as a sequence and if you don't see it that way you can go up to these three dots over here um, and then you go to frame display mode and it'll sh and then you just click on the sequence i'm going to set some keyframes over here and i will zoom in a little bit and i'm going to adjust these settings i'm going to start from this side and then go all the way to the end Again, if you wanted to add additional deflickering, there is an option to do that. You go to the Open FX, click search and search deflicker. You can add a deflicker. It'll automatically pop it up in the effects tab where you can either choose time lapse or advanced controls. I'm just going to go straight to the deliver tab, uh, which is basically the exporting tab. And then I'm going to set my keyframe. So I for inputs and O for output and you'll see there's like a gray line at the top here which will show you which file you have selected that you want to export. The format I've got it as uh, mp4, I've got the Kodak as h264, resolution is 4k, 24 frames. I set the quality over here to 170,000 kbs um, at a constant bit rate so that it's constantly at 170,000 bit rate um, and I do this specifically for my stock footage there are certain requirements for stock footage so I set it to that if you don't want to do that you can just set it to automatic I like to go to the advanced settings and just check off this box that says force sizing to highest quality because I want the time lapse to be at the highest quality um, video. Then you're just going to add it to queue. You'll see a little job pop up over here and it's, it hasn't been completed yet. You're going to click render and it will go through the rendering process. You can see the percentage or the remaining percentage of your uh, time lapse and then you have a time lapse and there you go guys it's that easy i know it seems like a lot but it really is easy and the more you do it the easier it becomes so let me know if you have any questions down below and i'll see you in the next one